Many years ago, I came across a few lines in a book that I connected with. They were, it's easy to judge, but you never know another person's heart, what gives them strength and what breaks them down. I have learned to listen more and speak less. The result has been eye-opening conversations and inspirational moments that I have shared with you right here. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Crystal and we're on location right now at the Chateau Brasserie Belge. Another episode of Crystal One on One and today I have someone who has a lot in common with me actually, I find. Um, where to begin? Fiona Kemigisha. A lot of people know her as Fiona Kemi. Some of her friends call her Fiona or Kemi. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Crystal. I'm so happy to be here. It's so nice to have you. Thank you. So nice to have you. When I say we have a lot in common, you're a YouTuber mm -hmm. <laughs> as exactly. well. And then we're both doing an online business course with we Tessa are. Advisory. Yes, we are. Yes, Isn't that so exciting? It's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like because we're on this different, because you're already like in the business path mm -hmm, and I'm mm -hmm. just like transitioning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just something for everyone. Exactly. Just all trying to find our space in there where we fit. And it's funny when you decide to just jump in and you commit to even just doing an online course. Yeah. You find the courage, you know, before yeah. you're like, I don't know, I don't know. And then it's a nice space to be in. It is. You also ask yourself, some really interesting questions there. Yeah. I felt okay. Yeah. Well we'll get back to that. Yeah. We'll okay. get back to that. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank I'm told you. you work at the airport. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've ever seen this beautiful face, chances are you were in wasn't the vicinity. <laughs> it wasn't you? Because I'm sure there you're very serious and completely Just like work mode. Yes. Because yeah. when um, a lot of people watch your videos, I'm sure, myself included, Thank they seem you. to be really goofy. Yeah. Like, there's a little naughty, goofy side to you. Just, 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 just a little. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> Has it always been that way? Have you um, always been that person? Yeah, I feel like I'm one of those people, I keep telling people I'm sort of an introverted extrovert. Mm -hmm. Like, it depends on the situation you put me in. In spaces where I'm really free and I feel like I belong and I can connect with people, I'm just... I'm my fullest self. I can be funny, I can be crazy, I can be very talkative. Mm -hmm. But there's some spaces where you'll find me and I'm really reserved. I'm just by myself in a corner, mm -hmm. reading a book. So you're that person. <laughs> you yeah. go out by yourself, have a coffee by yourself, Absolutely. have lunch by yourself. Watch a movie by myself. Isn't that so nice? It's so it's free. Nice. It's you nice. cannot wait on other people to do the things no, you love. You need to enjoy your own company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so born here in UG or? Yes, uh -huh. yes, born and raised. Okay, yes. where were you born? I was born well, at Nsambia Hospital. Okay. And we grew up in Bugolovi for the most part. We moved over the years, but Bugolovi was like, that was, was our Was that hood. in the flats or in, in the... the flats? Oh man. Good times. I the envy best. everyone who grew up in the flats. I remember <laughs> it was such a community. Yes. Like all the kids knew each other. We had so much fun. It was the best time. We were like the outsiders looking I in. Feel, I feel for you guys who grew up in like fences. <laughs> you're, you're also enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> you're enjoying properly and it seemed like um you had a lot more freedom to just mm. roam you'd be going from this block mm. to the other block and i kind of so i remember that growing up in an estate when i was a lot younger but yeah. it changes when you have true you know as you said fences walls gates yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it was free ish but of course you know your parents tell you don't go to the other block stay here on this block but then you go and then when you see their car somewhere you start running <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was free ish. Okay. Yeah. And are you the oldest of your yes. siblings? Oh, yes, I yeah. am the eldest of three. Okay. I have a slightly younger sister and then a way younger brother. Way younger brother. <laughs> Meaning like quite a few years went by. He is ten years younger than me. Oh. Yeah. That's and quite a gap. eight years younger than my sister. Okay. So, so it was the two of you for, for a long time. A very long time. Uh huh. Do you yeah. get along? Because sometimes the really close siblings <laughs> We do actually, we do like actually. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, we have our times, we have our times. Like we have had our so many fights, but she is my person. Like mm -hmm. I know. She's your I personal person. There. Someone said really? that to me. <laughs> really? Your personal Aww. person. <laughs> That's sweet though. <laughs> yeah, she's my person. I know I can always go there. Okay. And my brother is, we're very close actually, very close to my brother. Okay. Like we just, for some reason, we connected a lot when he was a baby. Mm. And you know, to this day, he's just like, you know, he'll call me, he'll, you know, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you think like he relies on you as his big sister? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. Like if there's something he'll I'm the one he'll call to say, there's this problem. Mm -hmm. So talk to the parents. <laughs> <laughs> he goes through you. Oh my. I'm the in between, the go between. <laughs> so yeah. And your parents? My parents are, I'm, I'm fortunate to still have my parents. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, my, my, sibling, my siblings live with them, although I live on my own. Yes, yes. You know, I branched out, uh -huh. out here trying to be independent you and left. all that good stuff. <laughs> he left the nest. <laughs> okay, well. It is difficult for them to accept to this day, oh. <laughs> after all this time, but Do they just have is what the it is. traditional mindset? Because I yes. know some people like, you stay home when you're getting married. That's yes. when you can. Yes, that would be ideal for them, but mm. I was like, oh, no, not for I me. want to. I want to just, you know, mm -hmm. just branch out and do something on my own for a while there. It's actually important. It's important to live alone. It's a freeing thing, I have to say. Like, I, I feel like I've, I've learned a lot of things about myself. I've grown, I've grown mm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Just simple things like having to pay your own bills. Mm -hmm. The amount you of growth. You have to check yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. the amount of growth you I don't know. It's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like I hope I hope that as we move forward as people as a society, it's something we accept more okay. because it's a wonderful time of growth. It really is. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have a formal job. You work with immigration, but you said that the people who really know you uh, wouldn't be surprised to see you moving into this different space where you're a lot more creative. Yeah. So in school, were you that creative child? Oh my goodness. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> my best friend. <laughs> My best friend always tells people, you guys, this girl was on stage from the first day of Nabi Sunsa. <laughs> She's what like, do you mean from the first day? <laughs> it's an exaggeration, but I think honestly, like probably in the first couple of weeks, in the first couple of weeks, I was on stage doing something. I've always been extremely outgoing. Like when it comes to being on stage, it, whether it was dancing but or Nabi singing. Sunsa, is that primary school or high school? Oh no, no, that's high school. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but okay. I went to I went to Lohana for primary school, uh -huh. and I mean, even then, I was I was on stage twenty four seven. Honestly, that was my love, <laughs> my passion. I was always doing. So what? Were you dancing? Were you acting? Were you singing? Mention it. Like I was doing all of it. Everything. I just loved. I've always loved creative things. I've okay. loved them. I love to read books. And I think books kind of propelled me onto the stage somehow because mm -hmm. I always I was always in the library reading things. I'm like, oh my god! And then there's a play, and then there's you know. So mm -hmm. it was always very exciting for me. I was always on stage. Mm -hmm. I don't know, doing whatever it is they needed us to do. I was like, me, I'm there. I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> and then that continued in high school. So what was your favorite yeah. memory like from primary school? If you look back at a at a time you were mm. on stage favorite it's hard to say like mm -hmm. just one time because honestly i keep telling lohana was i keep telling people lohana was one of the funnest times of my life mm -hmm. we had fun in that school mm -hmm. like people who went there know we enjoyed mm -hmm. <laughs> so honestly i just felt like we had so much freedom to be ourselves okay. whatever you loved if you loved sports if you loved like you were just encouraged to be in that space okay so it's hard for me to even pick a single time. We had so much fun. There was just so many opportunities for us to just mm -hmm. be kids. And Were you sporty fun. as well? Never. Never. <laughs> okay. Not once in my life. That never have was very final. Never. Not like not ever have I been a sports person. I just okay. I failed in that space. Okay. <laughs> so it was a punishment when they like come out to the field. Oh god. Like I was always isn't there some kind of artsy activity we can do instead of having to go for sports? <laughs> I was always trying to like go do like board games or something so mm -hmm. that I can not be on the court or in the field because uh -huh. That's not my space. I don't prosper in those spaces. <laughs> Even now. Mm -mm. So we won't find you in the gym. No, I go to the gym because you know health. Okay, it's okay. It's important, fitness. But you won't find me like doing badminton. Going for a marathon or triathlon. I've got for a marathon. Like some of us in like so group activity. Like group activity things of you guys, we shall go. Ah, okay, we shall go. Okay. <laughs> but no, it's not my space. Okay. Yeah. So you said Nabi Sunsa is like when you really, really flourished. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I was in Nabi Sunsa for six years. Okay, all the way. And, yeah, all the way. And anybody who knows me knows that I, I was always on stage, always doing like club activities, whether it's like debate club or it's interact club or mm -hmm. it's, it just didn't matter. I was always in that type of stuff. I always enjoyed those things. Um, I was I was always a good student as well because you know that's important. You have to keep your grades up as you was, you know do extra curricular. Was there pressure from the parents for that? No, I feel like they've always trusted me to 
maintain a certain standard and also just growing up as a firstborn there's just that responsibility to have that expectation yeah yeah mm -hmm. so i always was, I, I was a little bit hard on myself sometimes you know like oh no you need to do well you need mm. to you know you need to be an example that type of thing so i really tried to balance things the best i could <laughs> teenagers are a little <laughs> all over the place but you know try mm -hmm. to balance things in there i think as much as it was a time when I also explored my artistic side, it was, I feel like it's also the time that my light dulled a bit because Pressure from the parents for that? No, I feel like they've always trusted me to maintain a certain standard and also just growing up as a firstborn, there's just that responsibility to that have expectation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I always was, I, I was a little bit hard on myself sometimes, you know, like, oh no, you need to do well, you need mm. to, you know, you need to be an example, that type of thing. So I really tried to balance things the best I could. <laughs> Teenagers are a little <laughs> all over the place, but you know. Mm -hmm. try to balance things in there I think as much as it was a time when I also explored my artistic side it was I feel like it's also the time that my light dulled a bit because mm. because of the, the environment was so academic yeah I mean yeah we got a chance to do these other things but it was so much more focused on what is your academic life like mm -hmm. so it never felt like the things I loved were a real career path wow. it felt like oh those are your hobbies but then you have to have a real career path. So it was... That was the career guidance back then, no? Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, you're yeah. a good artist, but, but you know, doctor, engineer, lawyer, this is the exactly. only way. Exactly. But now we know things are different. We do. Yeah. It's, it's a good time to be alive, right? <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> when we know these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Nabi, since all the way through when you were done, yeah. where did you go? I went to UCU. Okay. And I did law. Law. Yes. So you are a lawyer. Then. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Little known fact. <laughs> Have you practiced? Um, tiny bit. <laughs> tiny bit. Not mm. a lot. Um, I was at UC for four years, and then I did my postgraduate in Nairobi okay. at the Kenya School of Law. So okay. I do have a postgraduate diploma in legal practice. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you want to be a lawyer? No. If you're honest with yourself. No. It mm. was honestly, it was something I did for my family. I mean, you know, I know family, they were always coming from a place of love. Yes. Like for mm -hmm. them it was, this is the best thing that we know, you know, for you. And because I was a bookworm, it was an assumption that, yes, oh, she's a bookworm. I she think law, in this area. you know, I think that makes sense. But, I know, I just kind of went with it. It was like, oh, you think? I, I know, and I wasn't sure of myself. I wasn't like... I didn't feel like my option, like the things I loved were a real option, like, oh, now I can just go and do this and do that. But could like, you see yourself being like a lawyer and like... I, I feel like I, I brought myself to a point where I'm like, you know, I think I could. Like, I, I made myself believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, in there I knew, ah, but I was like, no, I think I can. Like, if I put my mind to it, maybe I really, really can do this and I can really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just, like, kind of pushed myself and pushed myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Until okay. I finished so you did all your that four school. years here, and then you said you went. <laughs> wow, I did my extra two years that time. Okay, and then, um, but Nairobi was a wonderful place to live. Okay, um, as much as I was doing law and wasn't my true love, it was a wonderful. How city did you to end live up in Nairobi though? Um, so we finished um, the four years here, mm -hmm. and then because we wanted to go to LDC, but <laughs> things were tight. Things were tight. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, things were tight, and I didn't get in. Okay. So I applied in Kenya. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's how it went. Next thing I know, I was over there. So what did you like about Nairobi? It's just so is alive. It? it is. It's a very alive place to live. It's not that Kampala isn't alive, but Nairobi is di it's in a different way. Um, even just like the pace, mm -hmm. it was so quick. Everything was so quick, and it made me. I think it has it 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 made me 
in many ways the person I am today. My work ethic, I feel, I built a lot of my work ethic living there. Mm. Even the way I handle time, mm -hmm. it's a lot to do with living over there. Like, I love my country, but we are terrible with time. <laughs> We just <laughs> this country of ours. I can't even. We just be playing. I, I want to defend, but 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 <laughs> we play in time. So I'm just. It made me a lot more serious. I think like, about certain things. Just like gave me a very strong worth, work ethic. Just okay. being around people who are that driven. Mm. There was no way you could just chill. You couldn't have this chill attitude we sometimes have. Okay. Just made me better. And also, it was the first time I lived alone. And so my independence really started there, you know, just learning how to live by myself and mm. all of that. Okay. It was just, it was a wonderful time in my life. So I attach a lot of wonderful things to Nairobi. So when you went to Nairobi, did you go with like a bunch of other students as well? So like there were a few um. friends or it was like, well, let luckily. me go and uh, <laughs> What's say that? hello to the first person I see. <laughs> you know, luckily I went with my best friend. Yeah. Okay. Her and I went together, so I wasn't on my own. Okay. Yeah, I made it easy. Okay. So you didn't consider staying on after you I did. Finished? It was it was it was a tricky thing. I didn't I wanted to stay. Mm. And then I also had pressure to come back. Okay. So it was Where was the pressure from? From family. It was like, no, you should come back and, and do this work because because you know i'm a civil servant and i was like no there's a job here come and do this job apply and you know mm -hmm. so i was torn for quite some time okay. and that was i think that, that was another of the many times in my life that i gave into pressure <laughs> outside pressure <laughs> okay. and then eventually i came back mm -hmm. which was it was it was difficult in the beginning i was like ah, i feel like i want to go back you know but with time i settled in and i guess finding my own space where I could do what I like here at home mm. made it. That was when I was just, that's when I got comfortable. Okay. When I found my outlet. Okay. So you were working and then you found that outlet. Yeah. And that outlet was? Outlet was hair. <laughs> now, can we just appreciate the t-shirt before we even move on? <laughs> what? Uh, tell us about the t-shirt. Um, actually, I Can't got this, it. you know. <laughs> Although the way it is, some people be like, Call what? Um, I mean, mm -hmm. okay. I got actually got this like what two years ago at an event, a natural hair event. Okay. Yeah, there were some people that were selling these, but I just I've always loved hair. Mm -hmm. And in my time in Nairobi is when I discovered YouTube and you know just this whole internet space okay. where you could, you know, just teach people things and blog and vlog. And it was so interesting and. When I, when, I, when I decided to start just like dabbling in it a bit, um, I knew it was going to be hair, like for sure. I, I'd always been tinkering with hair, you know. Really? Always, even as a child, like, oh, you do braids, and I'm like, how can I make them curly? What do I do? Then I'd braid them, and then I want to put them in hot water, and then I want to, like, I was always tinkering with hair. So, you mean you can braid your own hair? No, well, not this type of braids, no. No, no okay. I can't do this. Like I wish I could, uh -huh. but yeah, my own hair, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I was always playing around with that, mm -hmm. and, and I said, you know what, this is something I could, and my friends would always tell me, oh, you're actually good with hair. Maybe that's something you should look into. So would you do Maybe your friend's hair as well? A little, not much, just a little. Like, oh, well, help me style a bit. Nothing serious. Mm -hmm. So, But you're that person, I'm guessing people would be like, oh my God, where did you do your hair? And you're like, oh, I did it myself. Yes, yes. Okay. I was those people, you know, like in your house, you have like rollers, <laughs> like some conditioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, and then, I discovered natural hair because I had treated hair myself okay. and then I discovered natural hair and just felt like this exciting big thing I could do. I was like, wow, this is a project. <laughs> I can actually cut my hair and start afresh and mm -hmm. it was just very exciting. It was also a journey of identity and I don't know, natural hair has been a very, like, it's been a saving space for me in many ways okay. because I mean, just like identity to begin with. The fact that you know we grew up with a very specific idea of how you're supposed to look or you know yeah just how you're supposed to look mm -hmm. and then um, how you how you're supposed to have your hair yeah mm -hmm. like your hair has to look a certain way you know presentable presentable has to look like oh, this yeah. Yeah. you know and again living and working in nairobi you know they were more free with dreadlocks and stuff like that people in court with dreadlocks and i'm like these guys are embracing something that's ours we still have a ways to go Are for you? that, but we're getting there. We do, we do. <laughs> so, just like embracing that part of being an African, being a Ugandan, like just, you know, knowing that, yeah, that's, that shouldn't be just, oh, maybe that's for artists. Mm -hmm. 
and actresses. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's something that's ours mm -hmm. and we can love it and it can be professional, it can be fun. So it just, um, it gave me this wonderful space where I could go, you know, like outside work, I can go there and do this stuff. And I was like, oh, but I can also teach people how to do this stuff. Okay. Yeah, and so I started blogging and then blogging eventually led me to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay.